This is Dr. Vamshi from Dog Dot Pilot and Aviation Academy. How many of you pay full attention to the safety talk given by airlines when boarding a flight? I would say 40%. Not me. The FAA in US has conducted a study which revealed plus minus 40% passengers only pay attention to the safety talk. Today, I'm going to give you the real safety talk which airliners never do or never reveal. Watch the video till the end. Statistically speaking, if your aircraft goes down or makes an emergency landing, there is a chance that 95% of you will survive. Even if it is a very serious crash, there is a good chance that 55% of you will survive. If your plane is going down, concentrate. Your life, your survival depends on those smart moves which you make in those last few minutes. 80% of the accidents happen in the first 4 minutes and the last 8 minutes of the flight. That is during takeoff and during landing. This is the time where you have to stay focused. Put your shoes on, close your tray tables, keep your laptops away, open your window shades and look outside. If there is a smoke or an engine fire, you should be able to notice at the first instance. Which do you think are the safest seats on the aircraft? The ones which are facing backwards, like the ones the flight crew are seated in. And that is not a coincidence. You cannot occupy those seats. Which are the next safest seats? The ones over the wings closest to the emergency exit. Why? Wings produce lift and the wings lift the entire fuselage. Now, the point where the wings attach to the fuselage are the strongest points. In case of a crash, it is likely that people die because the aeroplane breaks into two or three parts. But the chance of aircraft breaking at the point where wings attach to fuselage is almost nil. So the next safest seats are the ones over the wings nearest to an emergency exit. If you are not in one of those seats, that is okay. Here is what you have to do to ensure your survival. If the cabin is full of smoke or inverted, or full of smoke and inverted, how would you reach to the emergency exit? How many rows you have to pass to reach the emergency exit when you are not able to see anything? Take a moment and visualize doing just that. Before we continue, a brief introduction about me. I am a doctor with post-graduation in emergency medicine. Did everything in merit. I started flying out of passion. You all know that doctors do constantly teach in medical colleges. I was great at it. Now I started taking ground classes for pilots and a few batches are done now. Show me someone who is better than me, who can make subjects simpler, more conceptual and with lots of tricks. I am willing to learn. Join Dot Pilot 10 Aviation Academy for the best classes in India. Registration for December 2020 and January 2021 online batches has started. Offline classes soon to be started in Hyderabad. I do maintain a WhatsApp group to guide freshers. Link in description. Now let's take a look at the seat belt of an airliner. I know you all know how to use it. But this is because nothing is scaring the shit out of you right now. You're not in an emergency. It is common for the people in an emergency to try and open the seat belt by pressing a button which is actually not there. Like the ones they do it in their cars. Now take a moment and imagine yourself opening the flap in an emergency situation. Get used to the movement. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than the crashes. In case of something like an engine fire, we need to get every passenger out of the aircraft within 90 seconds. So, so leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins. Get out in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring evacuations to a virtual halt. You can find your life jacket under your seat. In case of an emergency and pilots reaches the aircraft into water, and if the fuselage is flooded, be very careful when you have to inflate your life jackets. 
in case the fuselage is flooded and you have decided to inflate your life vest you just keep floating inside the flooded fuselage you are, and you are not going to reach the emergency exit and moreover with an inflated life vest passing through the door which everyone is trying to pass through is very difficult you are going to slow the evacuation process if the aircraft you are traveling loses cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude below 10000 feet no big deal you can just breathe normal but if it loses cabin pressure at cruising levels here is what we pilots are trying to do we going to put the aircraft in nose down attitude but it is not dangerous we pilots are trying to do it also we need to call the atc our company and inform them any aircraft in our descent path should be removed out of our way after doing all this then only i can be on the microphone to inform you what is happening for those of you who did not manage to get an oxygen mask don't worry you're going to faint after a few minutes once the aircraft reaches lower levels you're going to wake up the biggest danger is the luggage in the overhead compartment once you open it it is going to fall maybe on someone's head so be careful there are several thousand reported injuries from turbulence every year but by contrast the governing bodies report only very few this is because someone can easily make up a court case saying helmets have to be handed over to passengers another biggest risk is the drink cart it weighs over 100 kg and every year many broken elbows knees feet are reported when drink cart slams into them so keep your arms and legs tucked away The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is about 1 in 10 million. You are far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And definitely traveling via flight is much more safer than driving a car or even going for a walk on a busy road.